All right, today I want to talk about how modern storytelling lacks hope. It seriously lacks hope. Today, we are living in an artificial sort of light, an artificial sense of direction that leads everybody to nowhere. And everybody believes that the path that they're on, well, many people, the path that they're on and the decisions that they've taken to pursue many things through the internet will lead them to Valhalla when it actually leads them nowhere, right? I've spoken about this, how the internet can be a great deception, which it technically is a great deception, and how the pie is not big enough to feed everybody anymore through the internet right and that whoever wants to actually make it on the internet he's going to have to play it safe and if you play it safe there's no way you can tell the story that you actually want there's no way you can inspire anyone because to play it safe you must agree with the political garbage because the gatekeepers control everything and they won't allow you to ever make it mainstream if you don't promote some of their garbage such as Black Lives Matter or the rainbow sensation, rainbow flag people, right? So modern storytelling lacks hope and hope is important because if all that is filled in our shelves is just sugar stuff, sugary, senseless, pleasure, pleasure filled content, then nobody can be inspired because above all else, it gets sickening, gets boring right totally gets boring and i for one i don't want to create stuff like that i know what the heck i want to create i know what i am creating i am creating a story that is meant to inspire and touch the soul of an individual the importance to overcome your problems not to embrace your problems not to get over your problems but to overcome them there's a difference so right now I want to talk about American media and how it robs people of its hope. Now, what you see here is Rick and Morty on Wikipedia, right? Everybody knows Rick and Morty. I dislike Rick and Morty because it offers no hope, because there's no real character development that is long lasting, sustainable, and well, inspirational, right? If we read a bit here, about what Rick and Morty is about. It says Rick and Morty is an American adult animated science fiction sitcom created by blah, blah, blah for Cartoon Network, yada, yada, yada. But I want to come to the premise here. And this is what I mean by playing it safe. If you play it safe, whatever premise you have in your story, these, this is the template that you're going to have to follow. They will promote your stuff and put it out there to demoralize the public because it follows this particular template. So let's read this premise. It says the show revolves around the adventure, adventures of the members of the Smith household, which consist of parents, Jerry and Beth, and children, Summer and Morty, and Beth's father, Rick, who lives with them as a guest, according to Justin. The family lives outside of Seattle, Washington. Uh, the adventures of Rick and Morty, however, take place across an infinite number of realities with the characters traveling to other planets and dimensions through portals and Rick's flying saucer. Now, I will say that this thing about infinite realities, this is a scapegoat that many producers and um, comic writers started using because they couldn't tell better stories. They could no longer relate on the ground with people's problems. This generation of people has new problems. Problems created by the fake doctors and the, de and the deceptive, deceptive media, right? And so instead of creating stories that can teach people how to overcome uh, deception and uh, bad diagnosis of your mental health and, and all that, because it's most likely not even true, right? No, they decided to say, no, we're going to create the new 52. No, we're going to create a different universe of Spider-Man. Oh, we're going to create this, this version, that version, that version of every superhero that exists. The heroes no longer were relatable to people underground. So they created a new universe 
with the same characters, different costumes and different villains, right? But ultimately, the individual reading it could not relate and thus could not inspire anybody, right? Could not inspire anybody about overcoming anything because now it's about the multiverse. So continuing here, it says Rick is eccentric and alcoholic mad scientist who ensues many ordinary conventions such as school, marriage, love, and family. He frequently goes on adventures with 14-year-old grandson, Morty, a kind-hearted but easily distressed boy who's naive but grounded, but grounded moral compass plays counterpart to Rick's uh, his ego. Now, I will say that when it comes to a description like this for characters such as Morty being a uh, morally grounded character, we know or you should know that this is primarily just for the sake of the story just for the sake of the story this is that fake it's, it's that fake i'm a good person sort of morality because it has no real foundation based on what morality based on what moral compass pointing to what right they're not going to tell us this because Morty being all innocent and distressed and naive must mean he's a morally grounded individual, but he has no real restraint. If any opportunity were to be presented to him in which he could get away with things, so what moral compass exactly? These moral compasses used to exist a long time ago. People were happy to say based on what, but now they're not. It gives you a false sense of direction and a false sense of righteousness. And these things are important because I'm the type of person who don't want to lead people astray. I don't want you to think that you're a good person. Nobody's good. You lied. You cheated. You stole once. You probably lied today. You lied to your grandmother just last week. Right? So at the end of the day, uh, I, I don't think, I don't think we should say, oh, we're good people. Nah, because at the end of the day, that just leads to people not living in reality and failing to write realistic stories because you think you're a good person just because you donated five bucks to the homeless guy. So that means you, you're a good person. And then you truly believe that. And then how are you going to tell good stories when you do not actually want to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know, I'm kind of messed up. I need to work on myself. Those who can do that are those who can write realistic characters because we all got something to work on, right? So it says, Morty's 17-year-old sister, Summer, is a more conventional teenager who worries about improving her status among her peers and sometimes follow Rick and Morty in their adventures. Now, this part is borrowed from reality. Most teenage girls indeed suffer from trying to improve their status in order to get approval from their... Uh, Peers. But the question is, does Summer overcome this sort of problem that she's living with? Or is there any form of character development? I've only watched one season of Rick and Morty. But from what I've seen, it does not seem to be the type in which there is proper character development such as in anime. Because I remember some guy making a video about how Rick and Morty started just relying on going into different multiverses to keep people entertained, to keep people coming back. Things had to be crazier. So in other words, if you want to rely on the multiverse to keep the people coming back, right, it means you have no substance. It means the characters still have these problems and so what? They have to take the pills, right? They, so they, they have to take the pills. They remain the way they are. They never change. They never improve. They are just condemned to the script that's been written for them. And that is uninspiring. Rick and Morty is no different to rolling a joint. Rolling a joint does not inspire anybody. You just sit there, puff it out, go into a different dimension, right? High as a kite sitting under that tree and that's it nothing changes nothing improves you're still a bum who just smokes all day that's what rick and morty is it's meant for people who are just bums 
straight up. It's not for the individual who wants to be better, right? I'm talking this way and I'm saying these things because there's a particular standard that I am trying to get across through my storytelling, right? And I want people to be able to rise and do better, not just read this because it's entertaining, just because it's sweet, just because I get high on it. No, that's not what I'm about here. Then get this. The kid's mother, Bess, is generally a level-headed person and a assertive force in the house, though self-conscious about her professional role as a horse surgeon. You know what this sounds like? This sounds like a husband. The mother, Beth, is the husband of the show, of the family, right? Level-headed and assertive force in the household? That sounds like daddy. You know, the dad that would have been in the 1950s and years prior. But now mothers are the fathers. And whoop de doo look at this. She's dissatisfied with her marriage to Jerry, a simple-minded and insecure person who disapproves of Rick's influence over his family. Mm -hmm. Demoralizing. This, this is what I'm talking about. Rick and Morty type American shows demoralize the individual soul but it is able to keep your mind somewhat engaged through the madness of the multiverse. This is demoralizing content. This is the robbing of our hope. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to run headless, like a headless chicken into multiple different universes. Eventually, you want to be grounded. You want order and structure in your life. And we have popular media like this, who are actually robbing the human hope, right? The things that matter, the household, they are destroying that and replacing that with the multiverse. Very subtly, right? It's taking away people's hope. Now, another example is um, Family Guy. Homer Simpson, heck, the Simpsons. Homer is this overweight, dipstick idiot of a father with children running amok right so on and so on family guy the overweight son the the crazy teenage daughter i don't know what the dog symbolizes but the little boy um little baby who symbolizes i suppose this this new generation that's entitled that thinks they know everything but ultimately there's nothing redeeming about family guy there's nothing redeeming of this human soul about rick and morty there's nothing. It offers no nourishment. And that's the point. There is no nourishment in American media and a lot of media these days anyways. We look at anime. They tell you to overcome. You need to summon a demon, make a contract with Lucifer or whatever. That's how you overcome your problems. Thus far, Berserk has been the only story in which the main character does not want to make a deal or become a demon to overcome his problems. Who knows if he's going to take the bailout. We'll see when new chapters come. Right? So, Rick and Morty, Family Guy, uh, Homer Simpson, The Simpsons, and this show called Teenage Euthanasia. When I first saw this thing, I was like, what the hell? Right? What, what the hell? Now, I want y'all to look at this trailer. And you're going to see what I'm talking about this 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 selling of hopelessness and replacement of dysfunctional, a jolly dysfunctional life. It can be jolly, it can be exciting, but it's dysfunction. Look at this. Family makes a house into a home, even if that home is a funeral parlor. Just that alone, that was taking a dump on the importance and value of family. And so now they are going to show us a dysfunctional family and say, hey, it works, it's cool, it can be like this, it's normal. This is not normal. A long time ago, right, in America in particular, this was normal. This was normal, right? It wasn't hard to obtain this. You were weird if you didn't have this a long time ago, right? But now, no, we need to replace all of this with dysfunctional jollies. 
dysfunctional jollies, once again, robbing people's hope, allowing them to pursue or to accept the trash in their life that it's normal to be this dysfunctional. It's normal to be jacked in the head. You want to know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of Africa. Because I live here, because I live here, a place with no standards, it is, it infuriates me. It makes me mad. Because a lot of things here didn't have to end up this way if these niggas would just put their house in order. But they don't want to. Right? They don't want to. And of course, here, they're not going to show that white family because, oh, it's, it's racist. It's the Ku Klux Klan. Right? They don't, they don't, they don't want to show you that. They don't want to show black people having a nice family like this, which is rare nowadays. Best believe the fathers there playing with the kids. We all know what them fathers are and they're not at home. You know that's true, right? But continuing with the trailer here. Is a funeral parlor. <gasps> Why is Timmy sleeping in the dead person basement? Meet euthanasia fantasy. Annie for short. Annie. Why do you look like a melted gummy bear? Her social life is DOA. Why are you writing down license plate numbers? So we can send apology notes. But if a tear can bring her mom trophy back to life, anything is possible. I'm a resurrected woman with powers. Crotch beetle, stop! I was totally gross, man. Is it funny? It is pretty funny. But it's making light of something dysfunctional. There is no redemption, again, in this TV show. It is an accepting of trash. It's an acceptance of it. This woman was dead because the premise is she got pregnant as a teenager, left her baby with her mother, her mother, got married to some guy, divorced, she died, and got resurrected as a zombie. Instead of doing things better because she has a second chance, no, she's out here running amok. She's out here continuously living in dysfunction as a zombie with superpowers. You can say, bro, come on, that's, yeah, that's just, it, it's just for fun. Well, that's the problem. You see, the problem is if things are just for fun, not only are you going to lose sales, number one, because that's exactly what happened to the comics, things just became cool. No values, no principles, no redemption, no inspiration. Writers started creating perfect characters or just archetypes that fulfilled a mission that could not touch the soul of anybody, that could not touch anybody living in this reality, right? The writers could no longer write stories that were similar or rooted in the current problems of this generation. Remember World War I or, well, World War II, I suppose. The comics back then, the Captain America's and Superman's truth, justice in the American way, that was Superman's uh, message, basically. You could say it was propaganda, so be it, but it was within the context of that generation. And truth, justice, truth and justice are objective things that are required for a nation to survive. Because of corruption now, there is no truth and there is no justice, and you know it. I don't have to go deeper than that, right? If you want to create stuff like this in which you just want to make people laugh, hey, do what you want, man. But if you're out here saying you want to create a manga that's going to inspire you the same Rock Lee or Naruto or any of these things inspired you, then you got to know where you stand and you got to know what the heck messed up the industry. It's because things started being saturated by garbage like this. Garbage like this. Now, I want to make an example with this manga called, I don't even, I don't know if I should call it a manga, Common Rider. I mean, Common America. Now, Common America, what is the claim here? Does this person claim that this is a manga? I'm not too sure. But it does have the manga style to a very good uh, extent. It also uses variant covers and uh, you know I'm not a fan of that, right? Created by Timothy Lim. So now the question is, what is Common Rider about? Well, according to the synopsis here, 
Carly was just the girl next door who dreamed about being a fashionista when her world was suddenly transformed after being hit by a cosmic debris, cosmic debris uh, shedding her corporate and media overlords and imbued with the American spirit of self-reliance and self-determination. She is the patriotic paladin now known as Common America. So you see here, I, I like this. I like this part of imbued with the American spirit of self-reliance and self-determination. Well, we all know that they're removing that since they want to turn. They've been trying to turn America into a communist state. But they slowly doing it through socialism with, you know, you know, what happened in 2020 and people relying on the state for funds, you know, and the food packages and all that and the food stamps. It's already like halfway there. But ultimately, it has a good message. But how is the execution? I, for me personally, the execution, uh, number one, I don't like webtoons the webtoons format i just can't read it i just can't read it i would say that the execution has been done like this tv show here called totally spies you guys remember this yeah now in terms of the individual who created common america or totally spies in their i don't know what they were thinking in their minds but the question i want to ask is can these two uh series actually inspire anyone it's limited to what it can inspire people to it's limited and i would say definitely with the passion behind common rider and the passion behind totally spies it can inspire an individual to pick up the pencil and dedicate themselves to the craft right dedicate themselves to the craft because ultimately I don't think, especially Totally Spies, it's just surface level stuff. Surface level stuff. It is a lot better than Rick and Morty because this thing is just straight up destroying people's hopes. Does this give any hope? This is strictly entertainment and it knows that it's just entertainment. But I am saying that there's an oversaturation of things that are just entertainment. People are looking for substance now. And I'm saying that we need to offer it to them because people are tired of the sugar. I could not be a fan of common America because when I look at it, all I see is cheesecake. All I see is sweetness and sugar, but it is very well artistically executed, right? Very well artistically executed. Even like this trailer, this animated trailer, it looks super cool. It looks super cool, but at the end of the day, the target market clearly is not for people like me. And that's why I ask people most of the time, what's your audience? What direction are you going in? They don't know, right? You just, you're just doing things because you liked something and you don't even know who you're trying to sell to. But I will say that uh, Common, Common America Right? When, I, when I see some of these pages, to me, it looks like a Sonic the Hedgehog, Archie, uh, superhero comic. And there's nothing wrong with that because the creator did not present himself that he's creating a, a manga of a particular standard. It just looks like the guy created a comic book and that's fine. It looks like so he does know what he was doing and what he was going for. So it works. So it works, right? I don't know if I should call this mainstream or not. I don't think so. This, this, this can't be mainstream, right? But ultimately, the creator of this manga or this comic knew what he wanted to do. He didn't present himself in a particular way and call himself a manga artist. Uh, I, I didn't see any of that. I did not see any of that, right? But he's doing a better job than Rick and Morty that offers no real hope, no redemption for anyone's soul, nor for the characters. Just a dependency on the multiverse. Common America seems to be attempting to portray the characters in a way in which they grow. And according to somebody who told me recently, 
yes, there is character development. So good on the guy. Can it inspire somebody? I suppose. But this is the bare minimum. This is the bare minimum, right? If you don't want to go as hard as Berserk, but you still want to inspire people, okay, this is the bare minimum. Knowing exactly what you're doing, who your audience is, then so be it. But I'm still not a fan of Common America because of all the cheesecake action. Uh, because it makes it rather obvious, hey? Like, it's, it, it's pretty obvious. So, no thanks. But ultimately, most mainstream things are hopeless. They lack hope. News stories today, it's just endless action, a hundred characters, and it just, just a reliance on the cool factor. That's what butchered Image Comics a long time ago. People want substance right now. Does Common America offer substance? Uh, based on what I've read thus far, not enough. Not enough. It's, it's the bare minimum and I would say this is geared to like maybe teenage girls and maybe a few dudes who like seeing girls in skimpy outfits. But ultimately, um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's that life-changing thing. But it can inspire you in terms of pursuing the craft of creating. That it definitely can, because there's great passion behind this thing. Great passion, and that alone is very inspirational, to commit to something. But in order to be better and go beyond and actually touch the souls of many, right? Well, that requires something a lot deeper. And I want y'all to just know, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to become an America? That's fine. That surface level, uh, bit, bit of uh, cheesecake, no problem. Or are you trying to be like Berserk? Do you have something actually important to say? Something that will give hope to people, right? That's going to teach people to resist the darkness. Because thus far, God has been resisting the darkness, not embracing it. These are the two things you got to ask yourself, right? Because readers are tired of people who don't know what the heck they are producing. They're just producing things because it's cool or fun. If it's just cool or fun, it becomes Rick and Morty. It becomes teenage uh, euthanasia. And these things can't inspire anyone. These things are without hope, man. It's just meant to rob you of your hope, rob you of your values, normalize garbage, and normalize dysfunction. And a poor standard of living, a poor standard of dignity. That is what these senseless family guy, Rick and Morty, teenage euthanasia sort of uh, shows do. Common America, it's the bare minimum. It's the entry level. Entry level to inspiring people. Berserk, well, of course, that's the next level. Hey, Naruto's inspiring too. Too bad Naruto's the chosen one, so not really Rock Lee is the, act, is the actual main character of that story, but you get the idea. For me, I want to inspire people. I don't just want to entertain people. That's what my manga is about. Until next time.